Today's video is sponsored by our longtime friends at Squarespace. The summer's wrapping up, but perhaps you've still got some vacation time planned at some point in the next few weeks. And as we move towards the fall, maybe you're visualizing that next big project that you want to jump into. A crafts business, perhaps, or a sports blog, or a page of super amazing memes. Whatever you're into, don't judge. Fortunately, Squarespace is the perfect web tool to help you fashion a website into whatever you want it to be. It's the platform to use when you're ready to get started on the next web project that you've been thinking about. You're looking to get in and out quick without thinking too much about what your website should look like? BAM! Use one of their quick and beautiful templates to make a website that's fresh and for you like it's right out of the box. Or maybe you're more of a hands-on person, you've got lots of opinions about what exactly your site should look like. Well, tons of customization options with Squarespace. And once you're done setting up your website, there's tons of extra features so your site can thrive. Email campaigns, patronage portals, social integrations, member-only areas, analytics, commercial options, 24 7 customer support. It's a lot of things and they're all in one place. So when you're ready to get started on the next project of yours, big or small, if it involves a website, it's gotta be with Squarespace. Right now, you can go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash brain food, and you'll get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. And let's get into today's video. If you've ever ridden in an ambulance, visited a hospital, or picked up a prescription at a pharmacy, you've likely come across an unusual symbol. A vertical rod of a staff with a snake coiled around it. Known as the Rod or Staff of Asclepius, this emblem is recognized the world over as the universal symbol of medicine. But where did this ubiquitous symbol come from? And how did it come to stand for the entire healing profession? The answer is a lot more complicated and more fascinating than you might think. Asclepius was the ancient Greek and Roman god of medicine and healing, born of an affair between Apollo, god of light, and Coronis, a mortal woman from Thessaly. According to legend, when Apollo returned to Delphi, Coronis ran off with a mortal man named Iscus. Apollo was informed of her infidelity by a white raven, and in his anger, all the ravens turned black forever. He then proceeded to send Artemis, goddess of the hunt, to shoot Coronis with an arrow. As Coronis lay dying on a funeral pyre, she admitted that she deserved her fate, but felt that letting her unborn child die was cruel and unfair. Apollo agreed and performed the world's first caesarean section, delivering his son Asclepius just before Coronis was consumed by flame. Having no time to raise the boy himself, Apollo placed Asclepius in the care of the wise centaur Chiron, the tutor of many other Greek heroes, including Theseus, Perseus, and Achilles. Under Chiron's tutelage, Asclepius became a great healer and traveled throughout the ancient world applying his medical skills. On one occasion, he was called upon to heal the son of Minos, ruler of the island of Crete. When Asclepius admitted that there was nothing he could do, King Minos had him and his son locked in a room together. During their captivity, a snake slithered under the door, which Asclepius immediately killed. A second snake then entered and placed a leaf on the first, restoring it to life. Asclepius then used this leaf to heal Minos' son. Snakes thereafter became associated with Asclepius and the practice of medicine. Asclepius' healing powers soon became legendary. When Phaedra, daughter of Minos, was spurned by Hippolytus, son of the hero Theseus, she called upon Poseidon, god of the sea, to kill him. While Hippolytus was driving his chariot along the coast, Poseidon raised a sea monster from the ocean, spooking the horses and causing Hippolytus to crash, killing him instantly. Asclepius was summoned and managed to raise Hippolytus from the dead. This ability angered Hades, god of the underworld, who induced Zeus, king of the gods, to strike down Asclepius with a thunderbolt. Apollo was so enraged at the death of his son that he began firing arrows at the cyclopses of Mount Etna, the makers of Zeus's thunderbolts. In retaliation, Zeus sentenced Apollo to live one year on Earth as a mortal. However, at the request of his father, Asclepius was accepted into the Olympian pantheon as the god of healing, and his image placed among the stars as the constellation Ophiuchus, the serpent bearer. Interestingly, Asclepius may actually have been a real person who lived around 1200 BCE. He is mentioned in Homer's Iliad as a great physician whose sons, Machian and Podolarius, served as surgeons for the Greek forces during the Trojan War. Asclepius also had four daughters, Hygelia, the goddess of cleansliness, Aso, goddess of recuperation, Asesso, goddess of the healing process, Algia, goddess of splendor and adornment, and Panacea, the goddess of the universal cure. But whether or not he actually existed, Asclepius was widely worshipped as the god of healing, with his main temple and oracle located at Epidaurus. 
Pilgrims seeking cures for various ailments traveled from across Greece to sleep on the temple floor. Any dreams or visions they received during the night were interpreted by the temple priests and used to prescribe the appropriate remedy. Certain Asclepian temples even kept sacred dogs to lick and heal the wounds of sick pilgrims, while sacred snakes were allowed to roam the temple grounds at will. These non-venomous Asclepian snakes are still found in the area to this day. From Epidaurus, the Asclepian cult and its practitioners rapidly spread across the ancient world. Perhaps the most famous Asclepian physician of all was Hippocrates. Hippocrates, the father of modern medicine, whose original Hippocratic oath invoked not only Asclepius, but also his daughters Hygieia and Panacea. The Asclepian cult reached its peak in the 3rd century AD, when over 500 temples could be found as far afield as Scotland, Egypt, Spain, and Persia. According to legends, the cult spread to Rome during a great plague when a ship was sent to Epidaurus in search of a cure. Asclepius, in the form of a snake, boarded the ship and returned to Rome. On arrival, the snake slithered into the Tiber River and swam to a nearby island, where a temple to Asclepius was duly erected. The origins and symbolic meaning of the Asclepian snake and staff is widely debated by historians and folklorists. The most common interpretation holds that the snake, which sheds its skin in order to grow, was seen by the ancients as a symbol of renewal and healing. Another theory involves the dual nature of snake venom, which is harmful or even fatal when injected, but often safe if ingested. Venom and other products derived from snakes were widely used in ancient Greek medicine, and this ambiguity became symbolic of pharmacology as a whole. Indeed, the word pharmacology meant both medicine and poison in ancient Greek. In either case, the staff around which the snake is wound is commonly sought to represent the walking stick carried by traveling physicians like Asclepius. When or how the two symbols became combined, however, is unknown. A more intriguing theory posits that the animal wrapped around the staff of Asclepius is not a snake at all, but rather a parasite, specifically Dracunculus medonesis, or the guinea worm. Endemic to large areas of sub-Saharan Africa, the guinea worm lives in freshwater lakes and rivers, where it typically infects fish and tiny crustaceans called copepods. The female guinea worm releases her eggs into the water, which hatch into larvae, which are then ingested by copepods. When a human drinks untreated water containing infected copepods, the larvae are released into the New host's digestive tract. These larvae then burrow through the intestinal walls into the abdominal cavity where they grow, mature, and mate. After mating, the male worms die while the female worms migrate towards the skin's surface, typically in the legs. Then, around a year after initial infection, the worm forms a large blister on the host's skin which ruptures and allows the worm to escape. <laughs> that is horrible. This process can take days or even weeks and is extremely painful, leading the host to immerse the open wound in water to relieve the pain. This, in turn, allows the worm to release her eggs, starting the whole process anew. Guinea worm disease once affected around 3.5 million people worldwide every year. However, it's well on its way to becoming the second infectious disease after smallpox to be completely eradicated. Good. <laughs> Since 1980, a CDC and WHO eradication program has, through the distribution of water filters and other initiatives, succeeded in reducing the number of countries with guinea worm from 20 to just 7. In 2018, there were only 28 reported cases worldwide. The traditional treatment for guinea worm disease is to wrap one end of the emerging worm around a stick or roll of gauze and slowly spool it out of the wound over the course of several days. This technique is ancient, appearing in the Ebers Papyrus, an Egyptian medical treatise dating from around 1550 BC. The practice would have been well known to the ancient Greeks and may possibly have inspired the image of a serpent coiled around a staff. Yet another theory traces the symbol to the Bible, wherein Moses is said to have carried a bronze staff with the figure of a serpent wrapped around it. Anyone bitten by a snake had only to look upon the staff to be healed of its venom. A related symbol widely used by pharmacists is the bowl of Hygieia, consisting of a cup with a snake coiled around it. After the death of Asclepius, his daughter Hygieia, the goddess of cleanliness, was assigned to keep his temples clean. The bowl she carried for this purpose was combined with the figure of the sacred snakes occupying the temple to form the modern-day symbol. The bowl of Hygieia is most commonly used by European pharmacies, where it is often combined with the figure of scales and a green Greek cross. In the United States, the mortar and pestle, the traditional symbol of the apothecary or pharmacist, is more common. The staff of Asclepius is often confused with a similar ancient symbol known as a caduceus, which features not one, but two snakes coiled around a staff and is often topped with wings. But the caduceus is the symbol not of Asclepius, but rather the messenger god Hermes, known to the Romans as Mercury. According to legend, Hermes once saw a pair of snakes fighting and threw his staff to stop them. To his surprise, the snakes coiled around the staff and froze in place. Hermes duly adopted the staff as his personal symbol, adding the wings to symbolize his legendary 
speed and efficiency. Over the centuries, the caduceus came to be associated with trade, honesty, and craftsmanship, and became the symbol of merchants, craftsmen, and, oddly enough, thieves. While the similarity between the caduceus and the staff of Asclepius and its association with honesty and craft, positive attributes for a physician, perhaps made such confusion inevitable, exactly when and where this first occurred is unclear. One theory blames John Caius, president of the Royal College of Physicians, who in 1556 created a silver caduceus scepter to be presented to all future college presidents as a badge of office, while another theory cites the widespread 16th and 17th century use of the caduceus as a printer's mark, especially in the frontispiece of medical treatises and pharmacopias. However, even as late as 1854, it appears that the distinction between the two symbols was still well recognized, with A. H. Burkett writing in On Tradesman Signs of London, we find Mercury, or is Cadeus appropriate in trade as indicating expedition, Escalapius, his serpent and staff, or his cock for professors of the healing art. Indeed, the modern confusion between the Cadaceus and the staff of Asclepius seems to have originated in the United States around the 1850s. In 1856, the Cadaceus was adopted by the United States Marine Service to indicate its members' status as peaceful non-combatants, drawing upon its association with communication, mediation, and honesty. The next year, the symbol was also adopted by the United States Army Medical Corps for use by hospital stewards who were not doctors but performed a variety of supporting duties in army hospitals. Later in 1871, John M. Woodworth, the first United States Surgeon General, chose the caduceus as the seal of the Marine Hospital Service, which in 1912 would become the United States Public Health Service. The reason for this choice is unclear, with some sources claiming it was a purely aesthetic decision, the caduceus being more symmetrical and visually pleasing than the staff of Asclepius, while others claim the symbol was simply a carryover from the Marine Service. Whatever the case, in 1902, the Caduceus became the official crest of the United States Army Medical Corps, further adding to the confusion. This choice is often blamed on the ignorance of one Captain Frederick P. Reynolds, who petitioned Surgeon General Brigadier General William H. Forward to adopt the Caduceus as the symbol of the Corps. However, as an article in the June 28, 1902 issue of the Army and Navy Register points out, Reynolds was well aware of the difference between the two symbols and deliberately chose the Caduceus on the basis that the rod represents represents power, the serpents stand for wisdom, and the two wings imply diligence and activity, qualities which are undoubtedly possessed by our medical officers. Similarly, many sources claim that another key figure in the symbol's adoption, Colonel John R. Van Hoff, was unaware of the difference between the caduceus and the staff of Asclepius. But as William K. Emerson explains in the Encyclopedia of United States Army Insignia and Uniforms, the sign of Mercury was deliberately adopted, as I have heard Van Hoff state, because it was the emblem of the merchant and hence the emblem of the non-combatant. The caduceus in our use of it is not distinctly the emblem of the physician, but the emblem of the whole medical department. The enlisted men of the medical department outnumber the physicians of that department. Both the enlisted men and the vehicles of the department, not to mention many other objects, should bear some sign of neutralization for protection. It seemed to Colonel Hoff and to the board that the Geneva Cross, which in addition to its use as an emblem of neutrality, is also the emblem of the Swiss Republic. There might well be substituted an emblem which is not the emblem of a a foreign country, and the caduceus was selected as the emblem which for many ages has served to indicate the non-combatants. Strangely, while the U.S. Army Medical Corps continues to use the caduceus as a symbol, the Army Medical Department, to which it belongs, uses the staff of Asclepius, as does the Medical Department of the U.S. Air Force. For a time, the American Medical Association used the caduceus as its symbol, but in 1912, after considerable discussion, this was changed to the staff of Asclepius. Today, the vast majority of professional medical associations prefer the traditional staff of Asclepius, while the caduceus is most widely associated with commercial enterprises such as pharmaceutical companies and the manufacturers of medical equipment and first aid supplies. Indeed, a 1990 survey in the United States found that the caduceus was used by only 37% of professional associations, but a full 76% of commercial organizations. Given the traditional association between the caduceus and commerce, this can hardly be a coincidence. And now for a bonus fact. Another common medical symbol with an unclear origin is the Rx symbol used by doctors and pharmacists to indicate a prescription. The most common explanation is that the symbol is simply an abbreviation of the Latin word recipe, meaning to take, which is also the root of the modern English word 
recipe. Indeed, several other traditional medical abbreviations also take this form, including DX for diagnosis, SX for signs and symptoms, and HX for history. A more exotic theory, however, holds that the symbol is derived from an ancient Egyptian symbol called the Eye of Horus. In ancient Egyptian mythology, Osiris, god of the underworld, was betrayed and murdered by his evil brother Set, who dismembered Osiris' body and scattered the pieces across Egypt. Horus, son of Osiris and the goddess Isis, sought revenge on his uncle, and in the ensuing battle, Set gouged Horus's eye out. Isis brought the eye to Thoth, god of wisdom and writing, who repaired the organ and imbued it with magic. Horus then used the eye to bring Osiris, whose pieces have been diligently gathered and reassembled by Isis, back to life. For centuries, the Eye of Horus was associated with healing and protection, and according to the theory, gradually evolved into its current simplified form. However, while poetic, there is little concrete evidence for this particular origin story. A more likely alternate explanation is that the symbol derives from the astrological symbol for Jupiter, the Roman name for Zeus. As William Osler, one of the founders of Johns Hopkins Hospital, explained in 1910, this symbol was often used by Roman physicians in order to elicit the gods' favor in healing their patients. Quote, in a cursive form, it is found in medieval translations of the works of Ptolemy, the astrologer, as the sign of the planet Jupiter. As such, it was placed upon horoscopes and upon formula containing drugs made for administration to the body so that the harmful properties of these drugs might be removed under the influence of the lucky planet. Another theory holds that the symbol became popular during Emperor Nero's persecution of Christians during the first century AD, used by physicians as an expression of loyalty to the old Roman pantheon. But as with many ancient symbols and traditions, the precise origin of Rx is unknown. The true explanation may be any of the previous, or all three, or just maybe something else entirely. So I really hope you found this video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, thank you for watching.